Whether you prefer yours chunky or smooth, sweetened or unsweetened, store-bought applesauce can get a little humdrum. Well, if you're looking to spice up your applesauce, I have the perfect solution for you here. This is my homemade applesauce. I prefer mine chunky, but smooth is also an option, as is sweetened or unsweetened. So if you're interested in freshening up your applesauce game and you want to see how this is made, stick around because it's coming up next. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Roy. I'm a home cook and amateur baker, and I'm here on this channel sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Now today is my recipe for how to make your own applesauce at home. And I am making a sweetened applesauce so that we can have them as snacks. But you can also make this as unsweetened if you would prefer. Now I did do a little investigating about apples and such. And I was curious because apples are not native to North America. Apples are actually from Kazakhstan, which is like between China and Russia. But I guess since seeds were easier to carry, those were brought across. And I actually did find out that Johnny Appleseed, which you all probably heard of in grade school, was an actual person. But rather than just as we saw in the cartoons running around throwing apple seeds, he was pretty much as odd as he was a pretty good entrepreneur from what I read. So what he would do is travel from the Northeast, wanted to get outside of the Northeast where it was very crowded. He didn't like the crowds of people. He would wander off and he actually ended up buying plots of land here and there because he would check and see where it seemed like populations would grow, where there were certain things that would draw a population. Just to make sure that he could draw a population, he would plant groves of apple trees. And that would get people to be more likely to buy land from him. And then he would travel on and do the same. So he did propagate apples across America, just not exactly in the way we saw in the cartoons. Now, the other thing that I discovered in my investigation is that apples are constantly evolving. They are constantly changing their molecular structure, turning into a different type of apple because they are trying to ward off insects that might be attracted to them. So they are constantly changing to keep themselves protected. So how do we get the same kind of apples all the time at the grocery store? What I found out was that the apples that we find that are consistently Cortland or Granny Smith or what have you, are actually clones, not clones like in the science experiment type of clone, but clones where they would take the tree and make other cuttings from it and so on and so on, so that they are consistent and that's how we get consistent apples. So that is the end of my investigation lesson for today. Let us go over the ingredients. I have here five pounds of apples. Now, why are they in two different bowls? because I have two different types. Here I have some Honeycrisp apples, which are sweeter. Here I have some Cortland apples, which are a little more tart. It's great to have a mixture of apples. You don't have to. You could get one of those five pound bags at the grocery store and just use that. I've done it before and it works fine. But I am trying to create a little more of a complex flavor. So I'm doing mostly sweet. I have three and a half pounds of sweet apples, one and a half pounds of tart apples, just to give a little dimension to the applesauce. But as I said, you could use all the same apples and it would be fine. But if you would like to do a mix, and this will be in the recipe on my blog, some of the sweeter apples are Fuji, Golden Delicious, which is a softer apple, so it really cooks down well. Um, or the honey crisp. If you want something more in the mid range, a little sweet, a little tart, 
then a Jana Gold or a Macintosh is a great apple for that. And if you want some tartness in your mix, you can go for some Granny Smith, some Jonathan's, or as I'm doing, some Cortland's. But that's five pounds of apples. I have here one half cup of water. That's just going to help this to cook down a little bit without sticking to the bottom of the pot. I have here one third cup of sugar replacement. I'm currently using the all-purpose in the raw people have asked before. I used to use Swerve, but there was a bit of an aftertaste that really bothered my partner, Paul. I could overlook it, but with this one, I don't have to overlook it. So this is the sugar that replacement that I'm using now for granulated sugar. Now you could, if you wanted, you could change that up for brown sugar replacement. Or if you wanted to make unsweetened applesauce, you would just leave that out altogether. What you could also do is save the sweetener for the end. And once you've processed the apples, taste it and see if it's already sweet enough for you. Or if you'd like to add a little more, a little less, you can play around with the sweetness. I'm going with one third cup. I have here one tablespoon of lemon juice. And that's really just because as I'm trying to process all of these apples, I'm going to put them directly into the pot and I'm going to toss them with the lemon juice so that way they don't start to brown before I get to cook them. So that's the only reason that that is there. And then I have here one teaspoon of cinnamon. Again, if you're doing unsweetened, you can leave that out. You can adjust the cinnamon up or down if you like. This is a fairly flexible recipe, so you don't have to worry about being too committed. As I said, change up the apples to different flavors, eliminate the sugar replacement or use brown sugar replacement, eliminate the cinnamon, it's your call. You could also, if you wanted, use some apple pie spice, which is a blend of like cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, things like that. So you get a different depth of flavor in here that would be more like an apple pie filling. So you can play around with that and that will all be in the recipe. You don't have to worry about remembering that. All right, so let me shuffle a few things around. I'm gonna start peeling the apples and I'll show you what I'm doing with the apples for the first couple and then we will move on. Okay, so I have my small bowl that I had my three apples in. Off to the side, I'm gonna use that to hold on to the peels, what Ann Burrell, Chef Ann Burrell, if any of you watch Food Network, she calls her thank you for coming bowl, which is where she dumps all of her things she no longer needs. So I'm just peeling the apple, and if there are any brown spots on here, any soft spots, you can just peel that right out. You don't have to worry about keeping that in there or getting rid of the apple. Then I'm going to take the apple and I'm going to quarter it. And I find this the easiest way to core an apple is to cut it into quarters, then set it down on one of the edges. Put my knife down here and cut across and just cut out that core. And then you have a perfectly cut apple here. All right, so I have this apple ready. Now I'm just going to chop it. It doesn't have to be too small of a chop. You can um, chop it into probably about an inch, I would say, and I'm just gonna throw that right into my pot. Okay, so I have my three apples that I had the tart ones. Now I'm just going to, before I do too many more, add in the lemon juice and just toss that around just to try to coat the apples that are in there. And then after each addition of a few apples. I'll stir that around again just so that the new apples get some of that lemon juice on them and keep them from browning. So I have a lot more peeling and chopping to do. Let me get on with that and I will be back. Okay, so this is the last of the apples. I'm gonna throw those in there and then stir them to coat them with the lemon juice that has kept the other ones from browning. So now what I'm going to do is take the sugar replacement, sprinkle that over, as well as the cinnamon, and just toss that through as well. So it coats all of the apples. Again, if you wanna make unsweetened applesauce, you would just skip this step. And once everything is nicely coated, we are going to add in our water, just one half cup of water, and toss that through. Now, you do not have to cook this on the stovetop. In the recipe, I will have the instructions for how to do it in a crock pot, where you would basically do exactly what I just did, but put it in a crock pot, 
on high for about four hours or on low for about eight hours. So that way, if you don't wanna fuss with being at the stovetop, even though it goes fairly quickly, then you can just do it in the crock pot, easy peasy. Now I'm gonna turn this on to medium high. And what we need to do now is let it start to boil. All the water and the juices from the apples are gonna to start to boil a little bit. So once we get to that point, I'll be back. Okay, so it's been about seven minutes or so. You can see that the apples have shrunk down and it is starting to boil. So now what we're going to do is cover this and reduce the heat to medium. Now what we're going to do is just let this sit here for about 15 to 20 minutes until the largest chunk of apple that you can find in there is easily pierced with a fork and I will stir them on occasion while they're cooking just to make sure that the ones on the bottom are not staying on the bottom for too long and perhaps burning or scorching. So 15 or 20 minutes and I will be back. All right, so it's been 15 minutes. I'm gonna check and see how the apples are doing. They're bubbling away. I've been stirring them on occasion and you can see a lot of moisture has come out of the apples. Let me check one of these. One of the bigger ones. Okay, still a little firmness there. So I'm gonna give this another five minutes and I'll be back. Okay, so 20 minutes have gone by. Let me just check the consistency here. And that looks pretty good. All right, so from here, we're going to turn this off. We have two options. If you like a chunky applesauce, which I usually do, you would use a potato masher, you could use a fork. It's just a little difficult to get in there with a fork, so a potato masher works much better. Or you could use an immersion blender or just put it into a blender and blend it up to make it more pureed. If you are using it for baking, like with unsweetened applesauce, I would definitely go for the pureed version. And honestly, you could use this for baking as well. I would just reduce the amount of sweetener in whatever you're making by maybe a tablespoon just to allow for the sweetener that we did put in here. But let me move this off to the side here so I can mix this up. And I don't want to be pressing heavily on my stove top, so I'm just going to start to mash and get the applesauce to the consistency that I want. You can also, as I said, use your stick blender. You could use your stick blender anyways, even if you liked it a little chunky and just like pulse in there a little quick burst just to break things up a little bit more. And this does take a little bit more, obviously, elbow grease to get this mashed, but it all depends on your preference for consistency. Okay, well that looks pretty good to me. Nice and chunky, just the way I like it. Again, if you prefer it pureed, just use an immersion blender or put it into a blender. I wouldn't put it into a food processor just because if there's too much liquid in a food processor, it'll start to spew out. But whatever your preference is, you could leave more chunks in it. You could work it a little more. It's all dependent on what you prefer. And that's all there is to making your own homemade applesauce. Now this makes about six cups, maybe a little bit more. So I'm using this as eight three quarter cup servings. You could reduce that, you could increase it however you wanna use it. But whether you make it with the sweetener and cinnamon or without, this is going to be zero bites, zero blue points per serving, or zero points, I guess, at this stage. Now, if you are following calories, one eighth of this would be 152 calories. And if you're following macros, the fat would be 0 0.5 grams. The carbs would be 40.3 grams. The fiber would be 6.8 grams. And the protein would be 0 0.7 grams for one eighth of this. If you adjust the serving size, it would alter, obviously. But to be able to make your own fresh homemade applesauce, can't beat it. Now this is probably, I usually get a giant jar of the um, unsweetened applesauce. And this is just a little bit more than I would get in there. And if you can get your apples on sale, a bag of apples, why not 
make your own. That way you know exactly what's going into it. Now I'm going to be storing mine in a little container so that they are at the ready, but you could just leave this in a bowl. You can keep this stored in the refrigerator two, two and a half weeks, I'd say, if it lasts that long. And you can actually even freeze applesauce. Just put it into an airtight container and you can store it in the freezer for about three to four months. So you can definitely make a big batch and not have to worry about it spoiling before you get to it. But I hope that you enjoyed this video on how to make your own homemade applesauce. If you did, I'd appreciate you doing the usual like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit the notification bell for the next time I upload any sort of video. The recipe for this, of course, will be linked directly down below, as well as the link to my blog itself if you're looking for any of my recipes. And also down there, you'll find my Amazon storefront. If I've used anything you are interested in, it may be there. And my Built Bar Rewards, Fetch Rewards, Skinny Syrups code, and my social media if you want to follow me over there, both my Instagram and two Facebook groups that I'm part of. So go check out that description box for all sorts of information. So I'm going to let this cool down and portion it out so that I have a snack, a zero bite, zero point snack whenever I want it. So until next time, bye.